Good afternoon. My name is Adeswa and I am here with Bukola Saraki. Yes, the former Senate President, the 13th Senate President of the Nigerian Senate, former Governor of Kwara State, and former Special Advisor to President Ulushago Basonjo, Special Advisor on Budget, right? Special Assistant. Special Assistant on Budget. budget. Nice. Um, thank you so much, sir, for taking time out of your day to speak with me and to educate everyone who's listening. Um, so first, I want to start with how you got involved in politics. Um, you graduated, I think, in 1978 from King's College, is that correct? And in 79, your father um, became a senator in the Second Republic. Um, did that influence at all, you know, your decision to go into politics? Mm, well, not as early as 79. I think much later on influence, I was not going to go into politics. Oh, he influenced me. We're not going I to. I made up my mind. I was not going to go into politics. Why? Uh, I saw it at close hand, and I it was I, I felt that it wasn't for me. I felt that um, uh, it took a lot of um, if you want to do it properly, it took mm. a lot of sacrifice, took a lot of hard work. Actually, um, very demanding and really non rewarding at the end of the day. And and I'd seen his own experience, what he'd been through, and mm. I said, look. Dad, I'm not going to do this. This is, this, is, this is not for me. What was your so, relationship like? Did he want you to follow in his footsteps? He did. He did. But I, I, I was able to negotiate my sister to go and do it. So she, so uh, she went into politics early. And oh, I, stayed, really? I, I stayed out of politics. Um, and I was doing fine <laughs> until uh, when we had uh, Governor Lawa that came in uh, in, in 1999. Until then, I was doing very well. I was in the private sector. And they accepted because they had made two attempts. There was an attempt, and I think it was um, nineteen. I'm pretty sure now, probably ninety-three, mm. um, where there was a national assembly election. Yes, I also go to yes. the House of Rep. They oh, got all the forms. They filled all the forms, mm. but they needed me to do the affidavit, and they couldn't do that behind me. <laughs> So, so I left. I left the country, and they couldn't get me for about a week. And the day, the day, the deadline expired. Oh wow! So I really wasn't. I really wasn't going to go into, and I was fine in private sector. And, mm -hmm. But then certain events now happened in '83. Um, in um, sorry, it happened in 19, 2000 and, um, 2003. 2003, 2003, the 2003, second, the second, yeah, yeah. So after Obasanjo came in, yeah. that. Um, Propel me into it. Um, you studied medicine, right? Um, but I feel I think you only practiced for one year. Is that correct? No, in England, I practiced for like uh, one and a half. One and, one and a half, half years. Yeah, I, I practiced. I after I qualified, I did my house what do you call housemanship, mm. and I started doing casualty in in, in the UK. Mm. And the NHS, then you were doing like one in four, so you're doing something like about about hundred hours, you know, which is very hectic and your, and your you paycheck. It? I enjoyed it. Your paycheck was very low. I can remember that we used to say that the doctors, junior doctors were being paid same same salaries as as, as uh, bus drivers. Mm. You know, and the, and the NHS wasn't ready to adjust. So, mm -hmm. so what my, my initial plan was to go to the, to the state. Mm. So I, I sat on the exams where you could convert and that was, that was, my, that was my plan. And then again, certain events happened, and I decided I was going to come back to Nigeria. Fair enough. So I remember and, that's when I came to Nigeria. And to societal. Yeah. Then, yeah, I yeah. came back to Nigeria. Um, Daddy just uh, we just had a, a long, protracted legal case, mm. and, and so there was a need for someone in the family to give him work with him and support. So I came on a non-executive, and then started working in the, we had a, we had a, a clinic. Uh, uh, called Saraki Komi Clinic okay. in, 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 Where? Well, in Lagos. It was okay. Lagos, Apapa, you know, about four or five around, mm. around Lagos, around the country. And started doing that. Yeah. And, and that's how. So I don't know if you'd want to discuss this, but you did mention that your sister went into politics um, before you. Yeah, she did. Um, and 
recent years, you guys had a rift that was relatively public. Was that painful to have uh, political differences with your sister um, in a public sphere? Well, it's one of the th one of the things you you sometimes unfortunately you go through. And, mm. But we had different views and, uh, on what should happen after I became after I'd finished my tenure as yeah. governor. Um, wasn't 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 the it was a difficult time. It was, it was difficult. Yeah, it was a difficult time because you, you have many feelings and emotions that go through that. Uh, but I thank God that you know after many years later we were able to make peace and. You work through yeah, it. Yeah, I work through that. And I, I think it's one of, one of the lessons of life sometimes because you you tend to see, it's later on you find that you're not alone, you know, those kind of challenges happen. What do you mean by you're not alone? In terms of it's not, a, it's not a, something that's happened, just you seeing it. Like when you engage and talk to different people, mm. you, you tend to find out that sometimes, you know, um, these kind of things do happen, especially yeah. when it comes to, you know, politics and, and people. And, at the end of the day, it's, just, it's trying to manage what you call your values and family. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one. You it's know? a tough so, balancing so, act. Yeah, it is, is. It is. It's what you think is right and what your, who your loyalty should be to. Mm. And so it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Speaking yeah. of loyalties, um, mm. when you were special assistant um, to Abbas um, he, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but he fired you. He fired me, yeah. He fired you, and um, it was partly because you, he felt you were loyal to Al Hadiati Abu Bakr. Is that? He never gave me the reason why he fired oh, me, see, but I, um, I, I, no, I think I think it was I think it was um, two reasons. What happened then? If you remember, I, I was special assistant. Mm. Um, I was seen as an APC. Um, um, sort of a, a PP member, a PP member mm -hmm. in the PDP government, and mm -hmm. I was only quite a very sensitive position as SA budget, uh, and that's one of the things. I mean, when we talk about that, it's one of the things I learned also about governance. It's not so much the position; it's who you who you are. Because I came into the government a year after it started, mm -hmm. and within a short period of time, I was not very prominent. And people were saying, "But sir, how can you allow somebody in opposition party?" to be holding this kind of sensitive position. Mm -hmm. The position was, I made what it was. And so what I think happened was, then the, then we had the tussle back, the problems back in Quara, between mm -hmm. the current governor, okay. who was APP, who was APP okay. and and, uh, and my dad back at home. Uh, so the current governor now put a lot of pressure on Obasanjo. Mm -hmm. And that, look, I'll support you, but I want you to support me mm -hmm. to come back as governor. And um, in doing that, this was part of my conditions. There's a young chap in your office. How old were you at this time? How old was that time? Um, 30s? 30s, yeah. yeah. As a young chap in your office, I need to go. And, <laughs> and then I think also the fact that I was working very closely with... Um, Vice President. Vice President. I was working very closely with Vice because I was SA budget. Mm. And he was in charge of the economic... He was in charge of the economy. Yeah, he was, because he was, yeah. he was chairman of the economic um, council. There's been some pushback so, in recent times about him saying that he was in charge of the economy. Well, we're in charge of the economic council. I mean, yeah. So meetings were being held mm. about the economic it, council. I yeah. remember my one of my own interactions with him was that as I was also looking at certain bills that we had to pass that I thought we needed. Like, for example, uh, I was the one that initiated the public procurement bill um, okay. that, that we're using now because I, as I was essay budget I realized that you know what we're doing that wasn't right and I did some research and found out that I had this bill in Brazil got it to him sat down with him so he was in charge I mean uh, in, in, in and he, he took an interest in that so mm -hmm. that made us have, so for that reason we had to actually work closely together yeah. and he, we used to have regular meetings in his office with the economic so relationship yeah so from the relationship, your relationship with your that. so so I think when it was now time for Person of Asian just started looking at the second term. Mm. That's when he made so I made those changes. And mm. so because actually I was with him in the morning and didn't have any idea. Can you tell me how you got fired? Because okay. I, 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 I can let me tell you because I will yes. never forget. I was in the morning <laughs> like eleven o'clock, we were talking, we were laughing, nothing. You know? Then I finished around five o'clock. Then I heard people were being sacked. I said, okay, oh my God, people are going to get sacked. <laughs> you didn't so I, think about it. I didn't even think about it. I thought that was, this was my man. So, uh, <laughs> and then around eight, nine o'clock, I thought it was nine o'clock news. I was even in, uh, in uh, 
Transcorp. You know, sitting down with the guys and... Oh, you heard on the news. I heard on the news, Transcorp. Just like that, the news of Transcorp one, one evening. That, uh, the following people have been asked to leave on their duties. Boom, 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 boom. And you heard your name? I heard my name. How did the people around you react? I was like, hey, what happened? I said, yeah. But you know, for me, you know, um, I, didn't, I mean, I had a job. I was doing very well. I, I went into President Basson just government reluctantly, and I'll go back mm -hmm. again. Uh, what happened was that if you, at that time in, in his election, my dad ran uh, for the primaries. Okay. Uh, and was not fairly treated in the primaries, pretty much, you know, it was a gang up to make sure he doesn't emerge as a candidate against Obasanjo. In know. the presidential primary. In the presidential primary. So I the Fale emerged, and then finally, um, well, for, first of all, um, um, Fale now came in, so they wanted to make sure it was just two southern candidates. Mm. So they made sure he didn't emerge in, as, in, uh, yeah. as a candidate. So when I've actually now won election, I've actually now reached out to the party you know, and said, look, I want to form a coalition or a national government. Mm. And met my dad. And after the meeting, I said, okay, who, who do you want to be the middle person? Mm. So it was, it was choose, it was Bafarawa then, um, myself, Aliru, and so we were the ones always meeting, and our governor then, Lawal, who were always meeting with, with, the, with the PDP. PDP. So yeah. that's how I that's formed how the, relationship, formed the relationship. relationship. So when we started, I said, you know, I said, look, I think what I'm going to do when I form my government, there are going to be some young people mm. in the cabinet as ministers. And so that was the first that's thing. How you... that's, how, that's how I got in. So, oh, so initially it was to be a minister, then the minister list came out. My name was not there. So I said, look, let me go back to my private sector. He said, no, 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 no come and become special okay. advisor. So I said, special advisor what? He said, no, just special advisor, you just be hanging around me. I said, <laughs> I said no, sir, I don't think I'm going to do that. Mm. So, uh, and then there was one day, after this, was, this was government had been like around for nine months, I went to see, say hello to him. <laughs> so, he say, so he saw me, he said, you have not started? I said, no, I have not started. You mean you have not started? You, you know, before he lost his temper, he, Chased me out of the place, and so finally, I remember General Liu, who was the NSA, then called me and said, "Look, young man, just go and start. Just start. Just start." I saw we now found a portfolio for myself. So, so when it was like time to go, you know, I was, I was, I was ready to go. So I want to ask two things that you brought up that I actually really wanted to discuss with you. One, um, in your dad's race, you know, they said they wanted another southerner. And I've always wondered, um, you know, whether I'm an Edo girl mm. and I live in Lagos and my identity is always in flux. I wonder how you feel um, if you sometimes feel like you're not Yoruba enough mm -hmm. for the south or the Yorubas and if you're not northern enough for mm -hmm. the north, like mm -hmm. how do you navigate your identity in this political space that's so like charged i would say um it's unfortunate that you know we're still talking about tribe and where you come from uh, i've always tried as much as possible to let the discussion be about what you you're able to give to the country mm, competence and competence capacity. ability and capacity yeah. and that's what has always driven me in all the positions mm. i've held and, I, and you know i can raise my head up in all the positions i've held it's all i've been trying to deliver competence and i think because of that maybe because also as you rightly said you work harder yes because you know you don't have anything else but yourself what yes. you what, what you do and how you perform that's all you have yes. so i still believe in that nigeria that we should all try and be Nigeria first. Mm. I, I believe that, you know, it's unfortunate that the politics we have, people play on ethnicity, play on religion. Yeah. Uh, we're still not there yet. And that is why where we are as a country. And mm. until we, we start picking people based on their capacity and go beyond, because as I say, when you have, as you have now, you have uh, tough times, it doesn't d decide whether you're north or south. That's you know, yeah. everybody's you going to have these elections. You don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's talk. I knew you were going to stick that in. Huh? You know, I was thinking. Uh, I knew you were going to stick that in. I just, you know, just wondering, you know, in terms of. In the right time. In the right, in, in the right, in the right time, I'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, I think because some people like us have voices, what we say. I think things are a bit overheated up at the moment. Overheated at the moment, yes. Uh, I think we all need to step back. Uh, because at the end of the world, it's all about so we have improving the lives of our people, yeah. and that should be our focus. Mm. Uh, but at the moment, I think people are, are not are not doing that. Yeah. 
So he said, you mm. know, Ogasan just said that he wanted to bring young people in mm -hmm. and you were in your 30s. Um, and after this, you go on to be governor, um, which is a very different role from being an assistant. Like you go to being an executive in your own right and um, having the, you know, taking care of your people. And then you go on to Senate and you become a legislator and you're now looking out for the entire country as Senate president. Um, what was your involvement in the Not Too Young to Run bill? And also, how do you feel about youth participation in politics? Well, as you know, most of those bills that you saw at that time really originated from what we were doing at the National Assembly. One of the, mm -hmm. one of the way I, when I was a student time as Senate President was that we sat down and we had an agenda mm -hmm. as, under my leadership. We had an economic agenda. So it was the first time that the National Assembly we invite leaders in the private sector and say to them, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What is hindering you from making progress? And we had this meeting with leaders of the Economic Summit, and it was the first time they've ever said, you know. So we, have, we now realize that there were laws that were like outdated. Yeah. And we start, for example, I'm not a marine specialist, or neither am I, or, so, or, or in the retail sector specialist, or, mm. or manufacturer. So, but we sat down with the people who are actually working with those laws, and they would tell us, look, how can this work? This is this. So we started reviewing those laws. So we did that on, on the economy side. Again, we sat down with people on the security side. Yeah. Then we sat down with different people in the sectors of the society, young people, what are your issues? Mm -hmm. So we now had this bunch of things that needed to get done. And that's how we had things like not too young, that look, that we had to amend the constitution in these areas. And that's how we started gradually. And you know, we have records of that. And one of the things I'm very proud of that, of the, of the eight Senate, despite all the noise you heard was that, those things we achieved was because we actually sat and planned it. So, okay. so the not too young was one of those constitutional amendments that we actually yeah. sat down and said, this. Um, "Youth participation. How do you how do you represent people that you don't you're not part of or you don't understand what their thoughts are? It's, it's so it's it's a, it's a no brainer to me. I believe that." We must, it's not out of just saying we want youth, but because I think they understand, because even me sometimes, I, I get most of my awareness of what needs to be done because I'm surrounded by much young people as my age. I sit down with them and we have different arguments and, and I'm on going this way and they said, mm, this, <laughs> this is where everybody's going. Yeah. You know, and they pull you back and, yeah. you, and it's because it helps you. It helps you to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. You don't govern for yourself. You know, there's sometimes you have views, you feel very strongly about them, but maybe that's not what people want. Yeah. And you've got to be able to accept that you're not there for yourself. Yeah. And I've learned that along the way from the different positions I've held. So that's why it's important. If you have 70% of demographics, they are youth, then, you know, whatever you do, whatever your policies are, must be... Do you have a mandated rotated. number of, like, youth within, you know, like, when you're... Governor, no, both as governors, both as um, uh, Senate Bundy. president, mostly all, all people that work with me are, are youth. And but then you, you mean under 40, right? No, 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 no. I mean like uh, under 30. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because no, you know youth means different things. Yeah, no, 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 no. I agree <laughs> with you. No, no, no. no. Most, of the, most of all my aides and Georgia my aides are, are very much, 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 much younger. Young. Yeah. Because I also started when I was governor. When I was governor, I went into Quara. Uh, what I did was all the like commissioners and, and chairman board, you know, I allowed them to come from the political class. So they're mm. much older. One of the compromises I reached with the leaders then, because my dad was that, let me have the essays. Mm. Who were young people? So, yeah. I those, so, I, so I surrounded myself with young people. SA agree, SA sports, mm. SA education. And, you know, SA, so those are the people that actually drew like some the of the hard work, the agenda, and the hard yeah. work. You know, so it was a good balance, and I found it, it worked, and it worked very well. So yeah. that's always been my my, yeah, my approach. Mm. I would say that two of your greatest advocates that I've met are two of your young. Uh, advisors at different times, Aminu and Aidan, okay, okay, <laughs> who are okay. always advocating for you. And one thing I wanted to ask you about, um, because you know young people, they're always rumors and they're always stories. I want to ask about how you emerged as Senate President, how that period was. I heard rumors of you um, that they were, they were threatened to lock you out of National Assembly, so you slept there overnight. Was that true? Well, we, we, we planned, the, we worked hard, 
Mm. And we also also wanted to push the issue of you know the independence of the of the arm of government mm. legislative. There was no doubt that I was the senator's choice, mm. um, whether it was level of competence or reach, mm. or and also being also the, the part where I come from and the fact that. Uh, uh, I'm accessible to senators, and I had felt the sense of belonging that that I'll be part of them. So that that was where they were. And then, as we got closer to the election, you know, some people decided, no, we, we're not going to make let him emerge. So all efforts were done mm. to stop the election from holding, mm -hmm. uh, lock the lock, lock national assembly up, um, uh, allow, don't allow them to come in, mm. don't allow me to get in, and so we knew that. So. While they were still planning, I was already in the National Assembly early in the morning, ready for the... Oh, early in the, the morning, so not uh, overnight. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't overnight. It oh, was, was, early, it was early, such a good story. Early, <laughs> it was early, early, very early in the morning. So you, you, can, you can argue what time is overnight. It was early. I you know. see. <laughs> the sun wasn't up. Huh? No, 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 the sun was over because the sun was over. I see me miles ahead for coming in. I would take that uh, as a You think that as a okay. Yeah, I think it shows. Um, it shows but we, 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 you know, we, 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 we determined that you know the the choice of the people or choice of our, our members of the senators, you know, would, would, come, to would come to pass. So I think as early as like four in the morning, so mm. we're we're there. And mm. seeing, and Do you sometimes feel that? Um, Politicking and governance clash. They do, they do, they do clash. Um, we they do clash in the sense that a lot of people who go into politics don't go into politics really to do anything. I mean, I'm saying that I mean, not everybody do anything good in the governance. They just want power for the sake of power. Mm. They don't have any idea what they want to do with it. Mm. And if they did, then you know there's some things that will get right and people will stand for their values and principles. One of the things we lack in the leadership in this country is that people don't have values that they stand for. And sometimes it's a difficult choice. I mean, you know, people like us have gone through uh, a lot of sacrifice because you make those tough decisions. You mm -hmm. can easily either succumb, you know, and go on the easy road and, and or say, this is what I believe in, yes. and I'm going to fight for what I believe in. And along the way, you know, people misconstrue you, don't understand. Uh, but at the end of the day, even after going through, I still believe that that is what's going to make this country better. You, right. go, you, you, you say to yourself, okay, I want to be a senator for what? Or I want to be a governor. What do you want to do with it? But a lot of people, they get elected, they like, oh, I'm here. <laughs> and it's a paraphernalia of the office as mm. opposed to what do they want to deliver. Mm. And one of the things I remember when I became governor is that every morning I wake up and say to myself, what am I adding? What, what do I want to do? Mm. So I, I, I used to stay focused on these are the things I want to do. Same, and I think a lot of people just politic, then they win. Oh, and that's why it's unfortunate we don't have debates. We don't call people to question. People never have to tell you this is what you intend to do when I get there. So what do you expect yeah. when they now get there? They don't do anything. And do you blame them because they were never, they were not even in a position to tell us this is what they're going to do. So in a, in a sense, but I think now with the kind of um, level of participation, especially by the youth. Uh, more more people were exposed, were educated, more people voted, well, it will get better. Yeah. And people being asked, you know, yeah, you want my vote, but what what are you going to do to do it? At the moment, that's not happening. Yeah. People just politic and just get there. Sometimes, you know, people argue that the skills required to be a good politician are not the skills required to be a good senator or to be a good governor, for example. Um, so the people yeah. who yes. rise through this... Era, yeah, but, but if you're going to vote or not vote them based on how well did they govern. Mm. They'll have to learn those skills. Mm. But today you could get away in not performing, either as a governor or as a national assembly member. Yeah. And you still get reelected. So why should they get better? Fair. I, I, I understand. So we, we the electorate, must hold people accountable. If you have not performed, you must not get reelected. Mm. Then people will now sit up and know that, that my only better. way to get reelected is I've got to do better. So I've got to learn the skills of governance. But now, as you rightly said, people don't learn the skills because sometimes it's not relevant in whether you get elected or not, or re-elected. Yeah. Mm? So a lot of people I've spoken to mm. say that um, sometimes, then I want to ask you a question, but you don't have to answer this mm -hmm. question. You're going to ask me in a roundabout, same question in a roundabout. Okay, no, go. I'm asking you a different question. Okay, go ahead. Um, it's about how you're perceived. Um, 
you're not necessarily perceived as like the old class of politicians, but somewhat so. And um, people who have held office in Nigeria are often um, perceived as corrupt. And you have had many cases or dealings with the EFCT or CCT, usually around um, usually around the time where I say you're having political differences with individuals in other positions of power. Now, does your perception, um, does it affect you in any way? Um, does it affect how you interact with I think the it, populace? I think it does because a lot of people don't, sometimes don't see it the way you just said it. Mm. People don't understand that sometimes they see this allegations and I know that they're all politically motivated. It's mm. only most of you go and look all the times I've had all the allegations at a time when I'm going against, you know, the government of the day. Uh, so a lot of people don't even wait to find out. They just see these allegations and they come to wrong conclusions. And that's why I said that it's it's a very tough choice to make. Sometimes, you know, the easy the easy route or the easy pathway is to say, oh, you know, I'm with you, government. I, 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 I'm not doing it again. Or I don't have those v values. And yeah. that, but... But it's been a it's been a decision I have to take because uh, you know I, I have strong views and I always believe my views mm -hmm. um, and those are the sacrifices you you make in doing that um, and 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 that's that's a point that and perception yeah because you meet people who don't bother to find out oh you know why was this chap you know accused of this or or what 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 happened here and what didn't happen here uh, I mean CCT is a perfect example. If I had not won Senate president, nobody even knew see who's. And I think I was one that brought CCT to limelight, you know, mm. because people, because the intention then was that look, they went to court, court to take so long. The whole point was CCT was to see how they could get me out between the time I was elected and the beginning of the government in September. And somebody mm. said, oh, CCT is the quickest. You can do it quickly and get out of it. Next thing, you know, I found myself in CCT. I'd never been invited by then, never been asked. I just got served. So it's unfortunate, you know, where we, we, we take our politics and ruin institutions mm. just because we want to, because of political fights. I mean, those are the kind of things that, honestly, if this country wants to get better, we, 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 have to be we are an institution that has to be stronger. And, and that's, and those are the kind of problems that we're seeing now. Yeah. Uh, not only in, in, we're seeing that in, in, in the fight against corruption, we're seeing it in the judiciary. Yeah. Uh, and we can see do that the society will suffer for that. You know, so, yeah. so you're right, you know, and that it's been tough trying to explain to people. But I think what I've noticed with time, people mm -hmm. are beginning to understand better. Um, people are beginning to see that, oh, no, this is what this chap stood for. I, I remember when I was sending president, people used to say, oh, it's Saki, that's not making Buhari work. Okay, fine. <laughs> I left I left in, 20, <laughs> in 2019, and I'm sure you can, you can, you can hold your views <laughs> whether they worked or not. But, but for that yeah. three, four years, people believed it. People, mm. There were people that used, actually believed that the AIDS Senate yeah. were the ones that did not, but it's not, it's not those kind of propaganda that, and those are the kind of perceptions you talk about that one has to live with. But I, I think I prefer to, you know, to be judged by what I believe in and do what I think is right. Because for someone, for someone like me, I'm not, I didn't go into, as I said, I wasn't, I went into policy reluctantly. So my I attitude, why, you know? because you didn't do a follow-up question on that. We'll come back. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I never, I never see that as, as a desperate thing I must hold on mm. to power. You don't I, believe in do or die politics. Why is it do or die? You're going, it's a sacrifice. I mean, truly it's a sacrifice. You see, the problem why politics in Nigeria, people don't say it's a sacrifice, because I still go back, let's go back and, look at many years ago, the people that went into politics mm. and look at them as as representative of their class, the class at when they were secondary school, primary school. Yes. With all due respect, I'm sure most of them were not, were not the top 10. The top 10 went to do their profession when they went doctor, engineer, lawyer, you know, it's those that do not make it say, oh, okay, let me go and try and be chairman of a council. And then, because a lot of people, serious minded people did not think politics was going to work mm. and democracy was going to work and they, and they focused on that. So to them, it was, it was a way out to keep their lifestyle or whatever. But do you think if the best aren't going into politics, the best, it's a self-perpetuating problem? Yeah, but now better, more people who have, who have accomplished in their profession are oh, now okay. going in so at that time. Yeah. So they're still the minority, mm. but they're big, you're beginning to see people who have, who have accomplished who are now mm. saying, okay, I want to go, I want to go to the House of Rep or yeah. I want to go to the Senate or whatever. So yes. you begin to see good people, good people go, going in. And for those kind of, 
people going in, you know, why should you be, why should you be doing that? Because you, are, you do it. If you do it properly, as I said, it's a sacrifice. And, and the sacrifice is time, yeah, you know, your family lose that, you know, yeah. So, so why do you must, why must it be doing that? Unless you have another agenda. Mm. Now, if you have that agenda, so you have to put your hand in the tail, and that, then of course it's a joy that you just go in there too. And then also sometimes, you, 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 one of the things you also suffer from is that the, the people tend to paint everybody with the same brush because you're all there, and, and sometimes ah, they're, all, they're all there to go and steal and those kind of things. So talking about going back to uh, in why I ran for government. So after I got fired, yes. I went back to, into the private private sector. So we now had to go back to Kwara looking for a candidate to run for governor, mm -hmm. right? And then there was a lot of pressure that I should, you know, I should uh, run for governor. Was and, the pressure from your father? Uh, no, what, what happened? Because I convinced him that I wasn't going to go into. It. He was even he was even what, he was even ready to run against against the guy. But what happened was the candidate, the Lawa. We were. I was one of those that actually pushed for him, supported him. In being governor, mm. so I had this blame every morning. My dad would come for breakfast. He say, 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 hey, "You see the man that you convinced me." <laughs> see, so there was that kind of guilt, you know. So it was like, okay, well, you know, I brought this. You know, we're one of those that brought this, so I got to be part of solving the problem. Mm -hmm. That was what really. Now I said, okay, and I now considered and said I'll run. I'll run for even after. And after I finished my governor, I had no intention of going to the senate. So, no, I don't know. Why? Seriously, I didn't. I didn't feel the form. Go and check. All the, after, the, after I finished, I'd made up my mind. I've done my eight years, and that's it. Is this uh, before the formation of APC or afterwards? No, that was before formation of APC. Before the formation of APC. Before, yeah, that was okay. in 2011 now. Yes. I've done my eight years in 2011. Yes. And I, I didn't pick up a form to run for Senate. It was like the last minute, and the leaders of the party said, look, you can't, you can't not run. You know, I said, no, I don't want to run. So, so that's why we had to actually do another primaries because some of the chap that, that, that was to run, who actually was there holding it, it was, now said, listen, everybody put pressure and said I had to run. So, so it wasn't that automatically I said, once I was going to become finished governor, I was going to become a, a senator. It wasn't my You know, it would be hard for people to believe But the that. records are there. The records are, it's not, I'm not saying something that I'm uh, making up. Yeah. You can go and check the primaries in 2011, yeah. whether my name was. I didn't, I didn't contest. contest. I didn't contest. Okay. I didn't contest. I mean, the, all I'm saying to you are, are, are factual. Yeah. No, um, but, but that's, part of, but that's part of the perception because yes, people I'm, believe that some of us ever just want to grab power. And, uh, yeah, and that's why I'm emphasizing that from my st going to politics, being to politics, is not about just power. Mm -hmm. It's about doing something with it. And it's not a desperate thing. That doesn't have to be. And that's why in most of our states where we do election, you wouldn't see violence in this. Because I don't know, what are you... Like when, when in 2000 and... Uh, uh, 15, when we lost the election in the state, and people said, "Let's look, just walk away." We're the only state, I think, we didn't take our governor to appeal and Supreme Court. I told the people, "Look, let's let's yeah. you know let them go and." I think run. Miami also didn't take. Oh, fine, yeah. So I said, "Let them go and let them go and con let let them let the, the state have an opportunity and see somebody else." Mm -hmm. There's nothing there that you have to hold on to, and I think that's what has to be happening in this country yes. for us to get the right kind of people to to lead. Some of the people that win elections now, um, it's, uh, you you sometimes sit down and think, really, are they <laughs> are they really going to make that impact in their states and their in the national assembly? Do they really even know what they're going there to do? Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately, the, the, we're, we're, still, we're still not there. We've still got a lot of, a lot of work to do yeah. to get there. So I think we're going to round up now, and I'm just going to ask you what you are most proud of. Um, and this is a very difficult a question very for yeah. someone who's had many positions, many roles, um, but something that you think is maybe your lasting legacy in choir state that you're like i'm proud i did that i'm proud i accomplished that i'm proud that my name is attached to that for posterity what are you it should be difficult for me to say, say one, one particular thing. one yeah. thing but what yeah. i think I'm, what i'm proud of is that every position i've held mm -hmm. i've left it better than before i came in whether it's as governor in my state i, I think to today i will still say that my record speaks with in my Very state. Self, yeah. uh, as chairman governor's forum, mm. as senior president, every position I've always left it. And people, whether you like me or don't like me, will tell you, oh, no, that was, that was either our best governor, that was our best chairman governor's forum, that has been the best senior president we've had. Mm. 
I, 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 that gives me a lot of satisfaction. And that's because there are a lot of things in each position one has yeah. been able to do. And, 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 and what I can say to all the young people coming up is because when you get to any position, you must sit down and say to yourself, what's your agenda? Yeah. What, it's not, it doesn't happen by, by, by accident. It only happens because when you plan and say, I'm going to live here in four years' time or I'm eight years' time, and say, I must be able to say, this is what I've done, this is what I've done. And that yeah. doesn't happen. A lot of people will get elected. That's fair. Well, thank you so much. So I wish we had all the time to speak, but thank you so much for having this conversation with me. It's been a I hope pleasure. you have the, an enjoyable rest of your day and enjoyable weekend. And thank you everyone for watching and listening. Have a good day.